Well, it's always been a passion of mine. I've always enjoyed music. It's a great way to relax, for one thing. But also, as I got older, I realised that uh, you know, creativity in all its various guises is essentially the same thing. All creative acts have an inherent sense of beauty about them. And it doesn't matter if you're a sculptor about to put the first chip on a piece of marble or a scientist about to design the killer experiment to demonstrate the validity of his hypothesis. All those things have inherent beauty. Reproductive healthcare as a, as a whole is a very sort of um, complex and large area. You know, on the one hand, we have very high rates of abortion and children that are unwanted and unplanned. And on the other hand, we are suffering from very high rates of infertility. In developing countries where populations are growing at uh, unprecedented rates, we don't really have adequate methods of family planning. Some 22% of the 210 million pregnancies that are created every year end in abortion. That's 46 million abortions every year. The fact that they are seeking an abortion is not, to, in my mind, a moral question. It's a technical question. It's the fact that technology has not provided them with the means that they need to control their fertility. On the other side of the reproductive coin, we have a high rates of infertility, particularly in developed countries. The average age when women start their families now is around about the age of 30. And between the ages of 35 and 40, female fertility declines precipitously, and a lot of women are in IVF clinics because they're at the end of their reproductive lifespan. One of the things we're trying to do is to develop a number of different kinds of uh, devices, contraceptive devices that fit uh, unmet need currently. One is a sort of pericoital pill, a pill that a woman would take at the moment of intercourse that would prevent conception. The other thing is that we know that most population growth is occurring in developing countries. Uh, most developing countries have a well-developed infrastructure for um, administering vaccines against disease. If you could roll into that structure a vaccine that would control fertility in a sustainable and reversible way, then that would also be a very important addition to our contraceptive armory. In terms of age and leaving it too late to have our families, uh, there has to be a solution to that problem and you cannot change our biology. You cannot change our biology, you have to change the social compact around women that recognises their dual aspirations to have a family and develop a career. So that really has to be driven by a social change. One of the great advantages of being Scientists of the Year is that it is wonderful recognition for our team. We have a fantastic group of people here at the University of Newcastle. Companies and individuals write to us the whole time to interact with our research group from Northern Europe, from North America, from Southeast Asia, because we have expertise, facilities and uh, ideas here that they cannot access anywhere else in the world. Something I've come to realise over the years is that universities are not uh, bricks and mortar. Universities are about people. And if you're in an institution with really great people, then it's a great institution. And I've been extremely fortunate in having great people around me from the very moment I arrived at this university. Everyone's been extremely supportive. And I think we have been able to deliver for the university an area of research which is truly world-class now.